Hello beautiful people, my name is Amanda Zitto and today we're going to be taking a little bit of a break from the How to Plan a Motorcycle Trip series to talk a little bit about my experience at camera camp. If you have not been watching the How to Plan a Motorcycle Trip series, you can go check out that playlist right there of what I have so far. Don't worry, we'll be continuing that series very soon, but I just wanted to take a minute to kind of go over what happened. <laughs> Few weeks leading up to camera camp seemed like they were going really well. Um, I did a once over on Briarios, realized that I needed tires and brakes and pretty much everything involved in the 16K service. Got all of that stuff ordered, all my parts arrived on time, no problem with that. But the process of getting my tires replaced took a little bit longer than anticipated, which left me replacing the chain on my motorcycle literally the night before I was supposed to leave. For camera camp um, and I had the realization at midnight the night before I was supposed to leave that I had ordered a chain two links shorter than what my bike needed which meant that I had to get up and buy a new chain uh, have it cut down to size even with the best laid plans things go wrong this continued to be a pattern I rode down the gorge it was beautiful weather i stopped a couple times between portland and kenowick just to make sure that everything was fitted correctly that i wasn't losing bolts anywhere and that my luggage wasn't moving i did have to readjust the bags once or one or two times because the bags were getting a little bit hotter than normal so i moved them kind of tightened them up and made sure that they were as far away from the exhausts as possible however in the spirit of my channel things always go wrong <laughs> i literally can't make this up my propane it exploded. I hit a lot of construction between Umatilla and Kennewick and about 20 miles outside of Kennewick, I heard a bang. I thought that my tire exploded. I looked in my rear view mirror and I saw some red thing bouncing off the pavement behind me. I thought, oh my God, here it goes. My tires exploded. My saddlebags have exploded with it. And then my stuff is gonna be all over the freeway and just and I also remember thinking as I was pulling over the side of the road that well I don't know why everybody makes such a big deal about flat tires the handling on my bike hasn't changed at all and I only thought that for about a second and I was like oh it must not be my tire when I got off the bike and I came around the back and I saw my yellow bandana hanging out of my saddlebag and I realized that my isobutane canister for my stove had exploded <laughs> I literally can't make these things up. In the process of going through the construction, the isobutane canister must have rattled its way to the bottom of my saddlebag. And after hitting a couple bumps, my bags must have adjusted again, 100% um, my fault, and had been sitting on the exhaust pipe. The isobutane canister heated up, and it does what gas does when it gets heated up. It expanded and exploded. I'm just kind of grateful that it wasn't my leg that it didn't go into my tire, there was no shrapnel in my tire or into my bike, <laughs> and that it wasn't worse. It was huge, huge props to the durability of my Wolfman bags that the hole wasn't larger and that I didn't lose gear all over the highway. That did not stop me from standing on the side of the highway and crying because I love those bags so much. <laughs> At that point, I was not thinking about being grateful that it wasn't worse. I was just upset that I had destroyed some of my favorite motorcycle saddlebags. I texted my friends Mimi and John who live in Tri-Cities. Thanks a bazillion times over to Mimi and John for letting me stay with them in Tri-Cities. I was just really shook up and I knew that I shouldn't be traveling that way. Saturday morning, I was in a rush. I knew that I needed to be in Big Fork by Saturday night so that I could go to class uh, Sunday morning. And I went to REI. I picked up some Tenacious tape, some Gorilla tape, and a new duffel bag to put inside of my saddlebag. And I did my best to patch up the hole in my saddlebag so that I could keep going. Eric Hogan, who runs Wolfman Luggage, saw my social media post about the explosion and was like, we got you. <laughs> Don't worry, we, we got you. I was just crying when I saw that. I love Wolfman Luggage so, so much, and I am eternally grateful for all of the support that they show me. And um, yeah, <laughs> like I said, I think it's a testament to the durability of their products that the hole wasn't larger. I mean, think about it, an isobutane canister exploded in my saddlebag. 
I didn't lose any gear on the road. I think that says a lot. <laughs> After my patch job, I got back on the road and headed to Thompson Falls. When I got to Thompson Falls, it was about 8 p.m. It was gonna be dark. It was another two some hours to Big Fork. And I was kind of debating back and forth whether or not I wanted to drive all the way to Big Fork that night. My new friend, Lindsay, who was also going to camera camp, checked in on me and was like, what are you doing? And I told her that I was debating back and forth about just staying in Thompson Falls and getting up really early to ride the rest of the way to Big Fork. And she's like, well, I've got a cabin and a couch if you want to come and stay with me. <laughs> and I was like, well, you convinced me, twist my arm. And I got the address from her, but not which cabin she was staying in. So I rode to Big Fork in the dark. It was about 1040 when I got there and Lindsay fell asleep. <laughs> and I knocked on a couple cabin doors. I think I freaked some people out um, and parked in front of a church to try to assess my options. The state park that I was planning to camp out was gated and I couldn't get in to set up my tent. And uh, there are no normal hotels in Big Fork. It's all lodges and resorts and they all turn off their phones after 10 or 11. And by that point, it was 11.15. And I kind of turned around, I looked at the church, and I was like, well, of all the places to set up my tent behind, probably the safest place would be behind a church. <laughs> the least likely place for me to get yelled at. So I set up my tent. I think I went to bed at like 1 a.m. I got up at 6 a.m. to make sure that all my stuff was packed up before the churchgoers got there on Sunday. All in all, it was fine. I saw a couple of people come into church who were getting everything set up for the services that morning. They kind of looked at me weird, but nobody came over and talked to me. Nobody told me I shouldn't be there. Um, so that was good. <laughs> I do not have a whole lot of footage of camera camp, to be honest. Most of it is Instagram stories. And I think that it's a testament to a really good event and that you had a good time when you don't have nearly as much footage as you thought that you did. For those who don't know what Camera Camp is, it was essentially a workshop event uh, set up by Sony and I Justine and her sister Jenna. There were essentially two versions of the event happening, one for VIPs, which had a bunch of bigger influencers there who were there all weekend, and then the one day workshop um, for all of us smaller creators. They accepted 100 applicants. It was awesome of them to try to spread the resources that small creators don't normally get access to. Oh, it looks, it looks nice. <laughs> as far as the workshops that I got to take part in, I did take the YouTube optimization class and the Sony camera tips. I think the Sony camera tips was definitely the most valuable to me. I learned so much more about my camera than I did before. I also learned that I have been a hella noob recording in AVC HD. The guy up front was like straight up like, you should not be recording in this format. It's a legacy Kodak. Like don't use it. And I was like, kind of like crumbled to like, oh. <laughs> there was also another creator there that kind of gave us a speech about like why 24 frames per second exists. And it was super interesting. After lunch, I went on the horseback ride and I pretty much just talked the ear off of the guide the whole time. scavenger hunt was interesting. We were broken up into much larger groups than I was expecting and we were given some tasks and we had to get very specific shots um, and that were all compiled by somebody else, not us. My group did win which was super surprising. I was not expecting it and we won these really fancy Sony headphones which were noise cancelling and now I know what all the fuss is about. They are crazy. My favorite part of the day was probably happy hour because Lindsay and I kind of like snuck away from the group and went and took sunset selfies and that was probably like my favorite thing. <laughs> and it was like one of the few parts of the day where I didn't feel rushed or like there was a lot of things going on. It was like, it was a nice break. I got to crash with Lindsay in her cabin Sunday night finally and it was nice and warm. It was really nice to not have to pack up my tent in the morning. And then I rode south to the valley and spent some time with my family before I came back to Portland.
overall, really glad that I got to go. It was really neat getting access to resources that I wouldn't normally have access to as a small creator. <laughs> I probably did not take advantage of the Sony gear checkout as much as I could have. <laughs> not that it mattered because I didn't get that much footage anyway. <laughs> a huge thank you to Sony, B&H, um, the Flathead Lake Lodge, I, Justine, and Jenna, and everybody who made that event possible. I know how much work goes into events like that, and I hope that they know how much we appreciated all of their hard work. It was really interesting to meet other creators that were in kind of the same bracket as me, but not in the same genre. That was very interesting. No one there rode motorcycles. So. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next week with another part of the How to Plan a Motorcycle Trip series. Just a reminder that if you like this channel and would like to support this kind of content, you can get early access to videos like these over on my Patreon account for as little as $1 a month. And that's not up your alley, that is totally okay. I appreciate you guys just for watching these videos, and I will see you later. Oh, and I have new prints in my Etsy shop, so go check that out. I've got to fund my trip to Babesford out somehow. <laughs>